Ladies and gentlemen, in my survival world, I have a giant castle at the top of a custom terraformed mountain that I built before I had any plans to make YouTube videos at all. And I can in fact attribute this build to why a few of my friends told me to start making videos in the first place. And despite my castle being the centerpiece and focal point of my entire kingdom, I've never given it a proper tour on the channel. So in this video, I'd like to tour the parts that have full interiors and build the rest of the remaining interior spaces, as well as add a gatehouse in the back, and just in general, add some foliage and texturing to the build. So to start off, right as the sun rises over here, I would just like to say that I never really had the intention of building this giant castle and making this world as huge as it is when I started. Honestly, it just started as me building the little village down here and started this forest. And then it just kind of slowly grew to become, you know, building a massive world. So a lot of the inspiration that led me to build the way I did here is the fact that I played The Witcher 3 last year, and I was really inspired specifically by Care Trolled, and the castle that's in that city, and I'll, I'll show a picture on it on screen here. Caretrolled is this really awesome looking castle in Skellige where they have this giant bridge in between the two parts of the castle. And while the style itself isn't as fantasy as mine, it, it was still really cool and a concept that I really wanted to work with. Oops. And as for the rest, I really, really love the style of Toussaint in that game, which is uh, really inspired by France or Italy, kind of Tuscany type vibe, which is why the rest of my world looks kind of like that. And because of those things, the first thing that I really wanted to do is have the bridge be a huge arching bridge where you'd walk into the castle and up to it by going under the bridge like this. And I'm really proud that I actually managed to build this bridge diagonally because at the time it was really, really difficult and something I just just started working with so I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out and it looks really cool on a diagonal like this and so as you come over here this is one of the parts that I really want to get finished in this video what I'm gonna do here is build a gatehouse for the back where you'd come out from that side of the mountain which obviously isn't built yet like that's just a cliff that drops right off into the ocean but we're gonna get to that eventually in the series of course but for now let's focus on building this path and lead it up into this one that goes all the way up to this gatehouse and later I'd also like to add a bunch of foliage and flowers and decorations and stuff to these areas that are just kind of bare grass areas. But coming up here, this is the entrance to the castle, and it is just pretty much a simple gatehouse with some trap doors and doors here. And what I did is some fancy redstone that actually hooks this up to the doors here. So these obviously power the doors because they're next to it. And then I have some redstone going into a target block. So what that does is it allows me to open this iron door as well, which I think is kind of cool. I mean, there's a lot of doors opening, but, but still, it's a nice little way to open all the doors. But this is what it looks like inside the gatehouse. And once you come through here, you're in this first little segment where archers could go up here and shoot people who'd be coming up the mountain through these little slits or between these crenellations right here so I think that's pretty cool I'd probably like to add some barrels and stuff up here as well maybe a few item frames with bows and arrows so we could look at adding that later but this then of course has a little connection to this area right here which just has some barrels and lighting and there's nothing fancy in these areas it's just you know seating areas for guards and you have a bit of a view of the mountain going up. The one thing I really like is that in this one over here, if you climb all the way up, I did a cheeky little thing here where I put two chairs down and a little wine barrel and some cake. So it looks like the guards have been sneaking around, maybe brought up a cake and some wine, and they're just uh, they're just having some fun on duty. I think that's a pretty funny concept and a fun little Easter egg if you, if you walk up there. And once you turn the corner over here, which is an area where I might want to add a decorative arch of some kind, I'll, I'll see what I do about that you get into this courtyard and this is probably my favorite part of the whole world honestly i don't come here often enough i think it's really cute and awesome and i really put a lot of time into this place and it just looks really awesome in my opinion now one of the things i really wanted is for my castle to be very interconnected in between the different areas so there is actually a way to reach every area from everywhere else for example, if you go over this way to the arch and open this door right here, you can walk up here and we'll check this out in just a little bit. And if you walk out this door, first off, it's, you know, how to get to this balcony. So you can just look out over the courtyard here if you like, but it connects over here to the little guardhouse with the cake. So in that sense, you can actually get to this part and have it connect to this part over here. And next up, that ladder leads up so you can walk up into this little area and into the south tower right here. 
And one of my favorite ways to do ladders is to add trap doors like this so that you can climb up. It just makes it a bit more realistic and thinner, more like a ladder in real life would be, and you don't have to have the, the full blocks going down. So coming through here, this is just a little bit of a decorative walkway, and I like how it turned out, but it's mostly a way to be able to get here. And over here, you can just walk up the stairs and get to the tower. Unfortunately, honestly, you can't really see out of these windows too well because the fence posts don't really allow for for you to see through, but you get a little bit of a glimpse, and my render distance right now isn't even enough to be able to see most of my world. But it's still kind of cool that you can get all the way up here. Another thing about this area is that I wanted to connect this up to the other tower as well, so I will do that eventually, but this part's actually the ceiling for my dining hall, so I'll see how I tackle that at some point with some stairs over this place. And if we come over this way, we can actually check out what's under this side of this little archway, and this leads you down into the wine cellar. And I haven't really finished decorating all this, it's a bit empty at the moment, but for now, it just has a lot of storage. I love using these beehives as storage units as well, because it just gives you more options like chests and barrels and it looks a little bit more varied you know but coming through this way this is actually where I'd like to have the entrance down into the deeper dungeons and the deeper cellar where I have my villager trading hall for now so expanding this into just the deeper system of underground tunnels I'm gonna have and connecting into some crystal caves and stuff I think that's gonna be really fun in the future but for now this is just the wine cellar I have some strength potions here to symbolize wine because they're kind of that similar grape color I don't know, I think it's pretty cute, it has the food storage, and it actually allows you to come over here and into this building. And if you're wondering what part of the build this is, this is actually over here. And this is the kitchen building. So when I planned this castle out, I planned it out using different rooms and things you'd find in castles. So obviously a kitchen, this part's the dining hall over here, and this area I guess doesn't really have a specific purpose, but you can get into the towers and stuff, so it's for watching. And then this side of the castle has a bunch of the other things you'd find. So the armory and forge, the throne room, and the actual residence for the lords. But coming back this way, we'll actually take a look at the castle, and the first thing you'll notice here is that I used a neat little trick, which is trap doors up here, which lets me do this staircase, and you can actually hide the trap doors under the carpets. I just think that's a neat little building trick that saves you some space sometimes, and this time it actually made it possible to have the staircase going up here. But once you come up in the kitchen here, there's a lot of storage space, and I wanted it to be kind of cramped in the small castle, but it has a ton of storage, most of the decorational blocks you can use to be honest and it's just uh, really cute has some cakes being baked over here and the knives for cutting up stuff you've got the washing section over here with some sponges and towels and then over here i imagine this would be some herbs and you know you got some eggs and a shell here maybe this could be an oyster or a mussel or something overall a cute little kitchen and from over here you can actually walk up here and i wanted this to be a little bit hidden but walking up here this is where the kitchen staff has their living quarters so you find a lot of rooms in here with just some sleeping quarters for the staff. There's nothing super fancy about these rooms because they're not supposed to be fancy living quarters, but they do have some storage for clothes and they have some places to sleep. And honestly, that's probably enough for someone who's just working here. This one over here is the biggest room and it's got some bunk beds and some bulk storage right here. So some bigger closets and it has one over here with a little painting and I guess some string too. <laughs> I don't remember putting this here, but hey. But yeah, I think these little spaces are pretty cute and I managed to cram in a lot of decorations. So coming back down, I'll show you guys how this connects into the dining hall. So for now, it's got these little carts here. So they're carting out some cake for a feast, I guess. And coming through into this room, dividing the kitchen from the dining hall, we've got this little section with the vaulted ceiling and some wine barrels and some snacks. And this is one of my favorite rooms right here, the dining hall. I just think this came out super nice. It's nothing super fancy, but when we get candles, I'm really excited to add the white candles here to have some longer candles on the table. And if you've seen my interior for the church, this is actually where I originally got the idea to put some of this glazed terracotta in the ceiling. I think it came out really cool. And if you come out over here, if we, you know, are a bit impolite right here and walk right over the table, you come out right in the middle of the courtyard. So this is where you'd get into the dining hall. 
And this isn't really the biggest dining hall. It doesn't have space for tons and tons of people, but it's not meant for tons of people because this is a really small castle for a pretty small kingdom. So it's just meant for smaller companies. Now, if you go over this way, this part doesn't really have anything. And this room is the least decorated room in this side of the castle. Basically, all I've done with this room is stored my maps of the end where I've gone end busting. And eventually I'll get rid of all this and move this. But if you guys have an idea what I should do with this room, please, you know, leave a comment, feel free because I don't really know. I might just put some decorations in here, maybe do a private meeting room. I have no idea. Definitely leave a comment and tell me what you think should go here because I'm, I'm kind of out of ideas for that one. But this, ladies and gentlemen, actually concludes everything that I've built on this side of the castle. And these are all the interiors that I've actually finished. And if you come out through the arch here and onto the bridge, you actually get a really nice view of the rest of the kingdom here. It's a little bit tricky to see with the sun starting to set right here, but it does look really, really cool. And despite the fact that it's very work in progress and we still have to connect up the terrain to the ground and do a lot of filling in, I think it's coming along quite nicely. But one thing that isn't coming along quite as nicely are the interiors on this side over here. I mean, so far they're not even coming along whatsoever. So I really need to do some stuff to this courtyard. And then if you walk into any of these buildings right here, there's just a lot of space that needs to be filled and a lot of dirty ceilings that need to be cleaned. So for now, I think it's time to jump into time-lapse mode and build this gatehouse right here. So I'm going to get started with that and start placing down a bunch of foliage and greenery right here. So let's just kick this into time-lapse mode. Oh yeah. To start off this time-lapse, I'm building the gatehouse and I went for a slightly offset diagonal with this one, mostly to fit in with the terrain I'd already built. It just fit best that way. Other than that, it's nothing extraordinary. I went for a design very similar to my other gatehouse for stylistic consistency. And at this point, I had no idea how much time I'd spend building in this episode. I know I say I get carried away pretty much every time, but this time I really went off the rails and built for more than 24 hours in total. Granted, most of that was spent on interior work, which I'll show off shortly, but hey, if you appreciate me putting in the work for this video, you could leave a like and tell me what your favorite part was. You guys are always really good at leaving engagement, and that's something I'm really grateful for. Wrapping up the gatehouse here, I started connecting up the road to the path that leads up to the castle and really naturifying this mini valley. It's been sitting here bare for months and months on end, and there's something really satisfying and refreshing for me to go back and deck out these areas I've been neglecting for such a long time. So I stuck to the theme of using the pink flowers and some of the azure bluettes. I've used them in the area a lot before, and the other tall flower option is the rose bush, which would contrast way too much with the teal color of the warped wood roof. Keeping these minute details in mind really make the difference in the grand scheme of things when it comes to mega builds. Keeping your color composition consistent and theoretically backed up is always a lot better than randomly just choosing colors. In this case, the pink and magenta really fit well with the fantasy pastel palette I'm going for. Speaking of the roof, I did something I've wanted to do from the time I first built the castle, and that's to texture in some cyan wool to add some variation and make the roof overall a bit more blue than green. I find the mix a bit easier on the eyes, and I'm really happy I mixed it up, to be honest. And lastly, I decided the second courtyard was a bit too empty, so I added a really big custom oak tree that really fills it out, and I think it looks a lot better. But hey, let's get back to first person and check out the rest of the interiors. I will see you on the other side. Alright guys, as the sun rises here over Ventia, let's check out the little valley down here and the gatehouse from up above. I think it looks really, really neat. It really fits in with the lush vibe we have in the whole kingdom, and I think it definitely adds to the castle and really fills this area in nicely. And then over here on the other side of the bridge, we have this really awesome view of the rest of the world. I mean, a lot of it's work in progress and really needs to be filled in over here. But so far, I think we've got a really nice view going on right here. But moving on over here, we've got the entrance and this place is looking so much more alive with the whole tree going on. I added a ton of crates and these barrels and chests over here. And my thought process was maybe they just got a delivery of stuff they got to put in the storage. I think it looks really cute. 
Coming around this way, we've got the forge, and the forge is pretty much the same. I added a few weapons and tools right here so for the world download, so that if people want some survival tools, they got some right here. But other than that, the biggest change to the courtyard here is, of course, the tree, and I think it adds a sense of interior down here as well. You're a little bit shielded by the tree's shade. So guys, I've been going crazy with interiors. So the first part I'd like to show off is this part right here, where the guards would be staying in the castle, and I got some armor stands and just some storage down here for the first First floor and as you come up here I really wanted this area to be full of storage and I found a really cool design right here where I sort of implemented the staircase here into the wall I made of trap doors I think it looks really really cool and it makes for a really thin wall because when you come through here into the kitchen and mess hall the wall really isn't thick and intrusive so this is where the guards would be eating and making their food and coming back out here we've got the little balcony over here where all the archers would be standing. I think it's really cool that this texture has the bow and arrow on it. So I added a ton of these up here and I even put a chest down and all these spectral arrows are from my automatic bartering farm that I made last episode. So in case of an attack, the archers could stand here and just snipe down any attackers. Over on this side, there's this little door that leads out here. I haven't really put anything up here, but this is just another little spot where you could look out over the courtyard. So you could have a guard, you know, checking out if someone is coming up towards the throne room. Just keeping an eye on things, you know? Coming back inside here, you'll see I've used end rods and these torches a lot. Anytime you see this in the tour here, I'm going to be replacing these with candles. But for now, I think it looks all right. I'm not really the biggest fan of torches, but hey, it does the trick, doesn't it? Anyway, coming up here, I wanted this really, really cramped feeling. So I added a ton of these bunk beds for all the guards where they'd be sleeping. Basically, there's just a ton of beds. They've got a little fireplace right here and then lots and lots of storage along the wall. It came out pretty cozy, I think. Moving on, I think we'll take a look at the cellar next, and coming through here, you can actually walk up here, and this just takes you all the way up to the tower. There's nothing super exciting to see here, but you can actually get up into all the towers and look out these windows, and we got some rendering issues. But if you're at the first level here, you can actually come up out here, take a look out over the kingdom, and take a look out over the courtyard. And I added a few seating spots right here with some plants. Just to overall convey that this castle has more of a pleasant vibe than the fact that it's fortified. I just feel like a lot of the people living here, even the guards, would be chilling a lot. And then this door leads into the residence for the main lord of the castle. And I think the best way to check out the main residence here is just to come through the front door. And as we enter, we just have this little entrance area with three options. The first place we can go is into the library right here. And as the sun is setting, we get a really, really cool view with the shaders through these stained glass windows. I up the render distance a little bit, and as you can see, we get a really, really nice view of the mountains and even the monastery out over there, and you can even see all the way down to the jousting arena that's part of Spawn over there. This is one of my favorite spots in the whole castle. You could just sit down here and maybe do some writing. Every good household has a nice collection of books, and this is where the royal family keeps theirs. Next up, if we go over to the right over here, we have a nice little living room. And so in here, I just added a ton of decorations, a fireplace, and my favorite part is actually this little sheepskin rug that I made. It looks really weird with the shaders now that they're actually waving around, but all I did was use gray wool and some coral fans, and I think it turned out really cool. It really looks like a sheepskin by the fireplace. But yeah, over here also has a really, really cool view of the monastery and other side of the valley, and if you come through these doors, it actually goes to where we just were up here. So everything is kind of interconnected in this side of the castle, just like the other side. Then, of course, we have these staircases, and I have one on each side of these rooms right here, and I think it was just a really nice way to get up to the second floor. And if we decide to go through to the other side right here, we enter into the kitchen. And I know there already is a kitchen on the other side, and to be honest, this one even ended up a little bit bigger, which doesn't really make sense, but I think it looks really nice. It's just got a really cute, nice vibe in here. And if you come through these doors right here, it leads to a little pantry in between area right here where I just put down a lot of storage. If you follow this all the way down, it actually leads into the throne room building. So we'll check that out in just a bit when we finish looking at the residence right here. 
So if we go up the stairs here in the kitchen, you get to this little section right here. And if we go in here, we get to the king's quarters. King's quarters has this little fireplace and of course the king sized cyan bed. You gotta have the Ventia colors in here, you know? Some extra storage. Of course, we've got our little wardrobes right here. We got a nice little spot right next to the window where we can look out over this side of the kingdom, which, you know, isn't built yet, but it's coming soon. And then if you just go over here to the right, you get into one of these little side towers. I haven't really done much with either of these on either side. So if you got any great ideas what to put in here, definitely comment below. But if we come through here and we walk over through this door, we've got a little bit of a hallway area right here. Doing this interior took a lot of trap doors and stairs and slabs, and it was a mess of resources for sure. But if we come up these stairs, there's a little staircase that leads all the way up to the top tower right here where we get a great view of all directions. Unfortunately, like I've mentioned before, you really don't see out of these. So these towers don't really have a purpose, which is why I haven't put much up here, but I think it's cool that you can go up there nevertheless. And the last room here on the top floor is probably my favorite over here. And before we go there, I guess I could show you guys that this is how we get to the other little tower right here with another little wardrobe where I still need to put armor stands, I guess. But if you come up the other set of stairs, we have this other room right here, and this is the princess's room. So I made the same style of bed just with pink. I thought it was really cute. Put a little cat in here. <laughs> And then we've got our little full body mirror and maybe a little makeup area. I'm really not well versed in makeup at all or the entire cosmetics world, but I still think this looks really, really cool. And I did my best, guys. And this, of course, is one of my favorite features of the castle because this is the balcony. So the princess would have this balcony to look out over the whole kingdom. I mean, you can basically see everything from here that I've built except for the castle itself. It's really awesome. Next up, we've got the throne room over here, and I wanted to put the throne room over here at the end, so you have to go through the whole castle, the bridge, and this whole courtyard to get to the throne room. And the first thing we see when we come in here is this door to the right, which leads into this pantry area to connect it to everything else. And if we instead go to the left, I made this little war room where maybe a small war council could sit and discuss tactics for battle. And I added this little map of the castle, which I think looks really, really awesome in here. And then just a lot of Ventia colors. Straight ahead, we have this staircase that leads up into here, and this is where the actual throne room is. So I just went all out and put in a lot of the Ventia colors, made a little bit of a diamond throne of my own. Listen, it's not the Hermitcraft throne, but you know what? Ventia is a very small and humble kingdom, and it's the best I got. But yeah, in here we've got a lot of nice paintings. I actually got a use for the pig painting, <laughs> which is pretty funny. There's a section up there, a little balcony for some guards. And of course the awesome stained glass window over here. I really wanted to add a chandelier as well. I think I'll add that in the future. I just didn't really have the resources to do it after all this. And with all the greenery in here, I think it really represents the kingdom quite well. But if we go to the other side here, when you come up the stairs, we've got this stairway, which leads just all the way down here and connects up to there. So we've got another little pathway to get up. And then if we go in here, there's just another little meeting room. I'm going to replace this with a candle, of course, but I put some grapes here, which is actually just a magenta dye, I think. But they look a lot like grapes on a plate. So I think that was really, really nice. And if we continue up the stairs here... Do, 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 do. we get all the way up here. So this is the area with the balcony where the guards would be standing and looking down, protecting their ruler. And then something I really want to do with these areas is make a custom map art of just a chess board so that we could have the guards playing chess up here. I think that would be a really, really cute detail. It's not something I had time for for this video, for sure. I'm already on overtime. But I think that would be a really, really awesome thing to do in the future, just map arts in general, to be able to add more detail to my builds. Now, of course, there is one thing we missed when we started going up the tower, the first thing we did on this side, and that is the cellar down here. And this place really gives me castle cellar vibes. We of course have more candle fodder over here and this area right here leads, well, it kind of leads nowhere for now. But eventually I'm going to add some crypts and catacombs into the crystal caves down here when we build the entire interior of the mountain. And this is going to be our way to get down there. 
But down here is the connection to the cellar over under the residential area. And if we come through here, we've got a lot of food storage. So I added a bunch of rabbits and some pork and poultry. I think it looks really, really cool. Over on this side, we've just got a lot of barrel storage, maybe some wine, some food. I also added this full diamond suit of armor and a sword that you might want to grab if you download the world later on. I think this area looks really, really awesome. And of course, it connects over here to where we started the tour of this side. You just come through here and you come out through this door. It's going to be awesome eventually when under the castle, we basically have more interior build than the actual castle itself. Yep, that'll be a crazy day. But the last part, of course, we have to tour here in the castle is the top area right here. And I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do with this place when I first built it. I actually wanted to make it my enchanting room. So once you get in here, there's some generic decorations and we just have a little section right here. We might have to add something in this book for people who climb up here. It's just a nice little shrine. And of course we have a great view of the kingdom from here. I turned down my render distance a bit just to have better frames, but when we have what I plant built over there, this is gonna be an awesome viewing point. But if we come up the stairs here, the first stop you see is going to be this little flying buttress tower over here where we get to it through the bridge. And I have something planned for this area right here, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to do that in the preparation episode for the world tour. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So for now, I didn't really decorate this too much. But if we come back over here and start climbing the tower right here, I moved my enchanting setup, which I've just kind of had down by the docks for now, all the way up here. And I think this looks really awesome. This is the highest point of my world right here, so it's the closest to the gods, and I feel like that would be the perfect place to put your enchanting table. And with all these bookshelves, it's got full level 30, so it's a combination of being pretty and practical. Yeah, guys, that's actually the full castle tour. I don't want to drag this out too much because the video is going to be way too long if I do that. I'm really, really happy with how this whole thing ended up. I'm so happy I decided to do this episode and put all this time into it because honestly, this castle is the pride and joy of my world and it really, really has inspired me to build some bigger and better castles in the future. You can expect that at some point on the horizon. But ladies and gentlemen, for this time, I have definitely definitely run out of time so if you enjoyed this episode remember to leave a like subscribe if you want to see more builds like this and i'm going to leave you off with a little bit of a cinematic of the castle right here consider it a bit of a reference to my first video where my first ever replay mod video was a little bit of a pan around the castle here so i'm going to do the same thing and if you stayed to the end of this video then you're the champ and i appreciate your existence and until we see each other next time have a good one.